Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am doing another um, marketing manager tools video today because the last one was really well received and you guys seem to want more of these tool videos. So essentially what they are is just me introducing some marketing related tools that I've used in my career or that I've heard about and have been tested by other marketers that I know. Today I'm gonna to be sharing five more with you and they are a variety as well. I have a project management slash communication slash organization one, um, social media scheduling, SEO, email marketing. There is a wide variety here today. If there is one specific area that you're like, okay, for example, email marketing, what are all the tools that you've tried for email marketing or what are all the tools that you've tried for social media so that you guys can get a few options. If you want a video like that, feel free to let me know and I can try my best to accommodate. But for today, I have a nice little range of different tools that I use as a marketing manager. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. The first tool that I'm gonna mention is something that you guys have heard me talk about so many times before in pretty much every career related video that I've done, but it's Notion. Notion is this amazing collaborative workspace tool that can be used in so many different ways. It can be used to track customer information. It can be used to build out a CRM. It can be used to build out databases for tracking data, for tracking analytics. It can be used for project management. I personally use it for project management, task management, time management, and communication with my team. If you guys haven't seen my Notion video where I go through my entire personal Notion workspace, please go and check that out. I will put it in the cards above. But I thought I would quickly show you guys today what my work notion looks like, how I have it set up, and how I use it in my marketing career. So here is my dashboard for my work. I've got my pillars and my resources over here. So essentially, pillars are kind of just the main pages that are very, very crucial, mission critical to this business. So that comes with like a website documentation. Actually, I feel like website documentation could actually fit under resources. But for example, our blog strategies, um, corner store audits, our projects database, and my tasks database. And then everything on this side are resources. So I've got a resources database so I've got a resources database that contains um, other resources that I have written up, website documentation, content ideas, meetings, et cetera, et cetera. The way that I've broken up this specific Notion board is I've separated it so each of the people on my team has their own specific page. And the reason I did it this way is just so they do not have to see everything in the task list. So for example here, like this gets a little bit crazy. So when I break it down for them, they're able just to see what is related to them, what tasks are related to them. Um, and they're able to organize this space however they want. They can decorate it. Um, they can mark things as complete. All the updates here, this is the communication with the team. So for example, here we can leave comments and chat with other members of the team about changes, what I need to do for this specific project. Essentially, it is just an amazing and thorough way to make sure that tasks are being done, projects are being tracked, and that all of your information stays within one system. When you go into projects, for example, you can kind of see everything that is in progress, that is not started, um, that is complete. It's just such a robust tool that is perfect for so many things, but for this team specifically, we love, love, love it for our project management aspects. One of the best functions about Notion is that you can organize your tasks and look at it in different ways. So if you're a visual person, you can look at it in a Gantt chart. That's not organized. We don't use the Gantt chart that much, but you can look at it in a calendar to see what's due, what's coming up next. You can look at it in a database that is filtered just so you can see what you need to focus on. You can see it all, which gets a little crazy, like I said, but there's just so many different ways that you can go ahead and organize all of your data which makes which makes reading and using this database 
so 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 much easier for everyone not just the person who's managing it but also for the individuals who are working within the projects anywho i can go on about notion forever but i leave a lot of my comments about notion in the video that i talked about earlier so make sure to go and check that out before we go to the next tool i just want to thank notion for sponsoring this portion of the video they are awesome and they support their creators in such an amazing way so thank you for allowing me to continue to share amazing information with my audience. If you guys wanna try out Notion for yourself, I do have a link in the description box below. I do not get a commission for this link or anything. It's essentially just tracking the traffic that is coming from my audience. So please go ahead and sign up there. They do have an amazing free version of their software that is available for personal use and it is awesome. It's pretty much all I use for like organizing my entire life. So really there is no reason why you shouldn't go and try it out. The next tool I want to talk about is a social media scheduling tool and it is the tool called CoSchedule. I discovered this tool actually earlier this year. I actually don't remember how I stumbled across it but I was essentially looking for a tool that allowed me to schedule over multiple different social media platforms while allowing me to see the posts and the scheduled posts and all of that content within sort of a calendar view. This is what I came across. It is so awesome. I'm gonna sign in and show you guys what our dashboard looks like. So you can create tasks within your calendar and those will kind of show up here. So for example, like edit blog posts, when you're done, you can go ahead and check those off. Then the calendar view, uh, I love, love, love that it offers this, but essentially you can see all of the posts that go out between the two brands that my company um, owns. So you can see all of the past posts that went out. I know it does get a little bit hectic, especially because we are releasing so much content, but to me, this is the perfect way that this content should be organized. It's super easy to schedule something new. All you have to do is hit the create button, hit what kind of content you want to create. Project is essentially just an organization tool that helps you create um, a group of content and um, social, you can decide between a social campaign, which is a series of social media posts, or you can just do one social message. So we can go here, select which um, profiles you want to post to, update, whatever it is. This is an update. Schedule it um, for whatever date, add photos, add videos, and you can go ahead and schedule that in. And at the schedule time, it will post for you. Another reason that I really, really love CoSchedule is because it allows for all these integrations. So for Monday.com, for Asana, Rike, Trello, it pretty much lets you manage your projects and kind of share the info of your projects all to your CoSchedule, which is awesome. It's so great. Again, it has kind of notifications. If somebody leaves you a note, um, if somebody leaves you a comment, all of these will show up here. And then one of my favorite parts of it has got to be their WordPress integration. So we do use WordPress to manage our website as well as our blog for my nine to five job. Um, and there's this great plugin for the co-schedule uh, software and your account. So you can download the plugin, sign in, and you're able to schedule posts directly from that platform or from that plugin. In. So for example, I wrote this blog post about how to secure a great accountant. Um, and as soon as that post is ready to go, I can actually just come into here and be like, do I want to schedule a post same day as publish, day after publish, hit that, and it will automatically put in the title as well as the URL. And you can go ahead and just add a new, I guess like post. So this is our newest blog post on the cash is king blog and voila you can go ahead and super easily schedule it to whatever social profile that you want i think that is such a useful little connection that they've made there because it definitely takes up a lot of time when you're editing like four five six blog posts in a day and you want to schedule content for each of them and you have to hop between pages make sure you're copying things correctly having the plugin right within the editing dashboard just makes it 
incredibly easy and yeah it's just a great integration they work so well together and the tool itself is great as well by the way all of the links to every single tool that I talk about in this video will be in the description box if you guys want to go and try it out the next tool that I want to talk about is also related to WordPress because it is a plugin for WordPress and it is the plugin Yoast I know one of the biggest things that people struggle with especially when you're first getting into marketing is the idea of SEO and how you can implement small changes to your workflow to improve your website's SEO. I still struggle with the idea of SEO. There's just constantly new like algorithm changes and things to take into effect and to consider when you are building out a website or working on a website. I know some people will say that it is easy, it is straightforward, but to me SEO is really not. That's why I really appreciate tools like Yoast. Yoast SEO essentially is a, another plugin that connects to your WordPress. So like I said, we manage our website as well as our blog on WordPress. So we use the Yoast SEO tool to make sure that all the blog posts and new content that we're putting out there, all the new landing pages that we're creating are optimized for a specific or string of keywords. So if you can see here, for this specific article, our key phrase or focus key phrase is great accountant. Once you kind of decide what your focus key phrase is, it will go through and comb through the text that you've written for that page and give you a set of tips and tricks to make that page very, uh, very search engine optimized, I guess. So for example, if I removed great and just did accountant, oh, that's so, okay, let's do something else. Let's do secure, for example. So you can see that that little face that was green turned into a bit of a sad orange face. And essentially that's just its easy way of telling you like, hey, this is not optimized that well. You can go in and look at exactly why when you hit SEO analysis, it'll tell you, okay, no images appear on this page. Key phrase in introduction, your key phrase does not appear in the, in the first paragraph. Your key phrase density is not enough, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So when you go back, let's put back great accountant and look here then you can see all the great results so the outbound links are great internal links are great key phrase introduction is great um, some improvements to make the meta description length is too short key phrase in title make sure it matches and then again the problem areas are that there's still no images on the page and um, there's no key phrases in the subheading. So it really breaks it down for you exactly what you should be looking for when you are trying to optimize a blog post for um, search engines, I guess. If you do not use WordPress for your specific site, I think this is really cool as well if you just take a screenshot of what's on the page right now because those are essentially things that you should be looking for when you're putting together a page or a blog post um, and it's something that you should be considering every time you release new content or new website pages because those are the small little changes that you can make to your work that is going to help with um, optimizing a page for a specific keyword. But having the tool just makes it so incredibly easy and then you can tell it whether something is a cornerstone content, you can add uh, additional key phrases, although that is a premium um, tool that we don't pay for, we just use the free version and it gives you even like how, um, you know, like whether your meta description is long enough, whether it is including the keyword, etc. It just gives you a ton of great advice about your SEO. And I think for somebody who's just starting out, who has no idea how to tackle that aspect of their marketing, this is like an amazing tool for it. Free, there really is no reason why you shouldn't be using Yoast if you are operating on WordPress. And yeah, it's been something that I've been using since day one. And it's something that I'm gonna continue to use over the years because it is just so, so helpful. The fourth tool that I wanna mention is another free tool and it is Google Search Console. It is also related to SEO ranking, keyword research, etc, etc. This is essentially our Google Console. I've blurred it because obviously there is sensitive information on here such as our website traffic, etc, etc. But there are some parts that I want to point out specifically such as things like your search results. So these are the top things that people are searching to land on your page. Essentially Search Console gives you super, super important information and data on how people are finding your page, what keywords they're Googling to get to your pages, what pages they're landing on from those keywords. 
It is an amazing tool for you to leverage to continue to work on your SEO and to work on and tailoring it so that it can gain more traffic over time. And what I mean by that is, for example, okay, clearly people are querying Cashew because that's her brand, but what are some other kind of topics that people are searching and they're landing on our site? So Cashew accounting, types of accounts, that might be interesting. Why do we need accounting? That's also interesting. Bank loan and trial balance. So all of these are topics that people are searching on our pages are actually showing up quite high, high enough that they are actually clicking onto our pages to try to find the answers to their questions. And largely this is because we already have great content out there about these specific topics, but this is just a great way to monitor that as well as give you ideas on what topics are popular and what you should be writing more content about. Also, if you find that there is a specific topic that is working really well and gaining a lot of traffic for you, for example, for us, that would be types of accounts. We can turn that into a cornerstone piece and just build off so many additional blog posts after that. Um, and that is really going to help one build up some internal link juice, but also just kind of create more content around something that is already getting you traffic. It's giving people other places to go once they finish that specific article that they're landing in. There's just so many reasons why this is going to be a great way for you to one, improve the time on page as well as two, bring in more organic traffic. There are tons of other ways that you can use Search Console as well. So you can see here, these are the pages that people are landing on. You can even see what devices that they are using the most often. All in all, this is gonna be a critical tool to helping you understand how people are behaving and reacting to your different pieces of content and your web pages and how you can continue to use that data to improve your metrics. The last tool that I wanted to mention today is Clavio. I know I mentioned Autopilot in my last video as a email marketing tool, but if you're looking for something a little bit more budget friendly and requires essentially no development work, Clavio is an amazing tool for anybody who's just starting out. I personally prefer Clavio over kind of more popular choices like MailChimp, for example. I just find that it is much more of a customizable tool and I just find that the flow of it makes a lot more sense to me and that it's a little bit easier to use. So this is just inside my capsule, the brand um, dashboard that I used before. You can create campaigns, which are essentially just um, single emails or series of emails that go out. So we had a Black Friday sale, we have like newsletter announcements, etc. There's this flow section which allows you to create automated messages. So for example, abandoned cart reminders, browse abandonment reminders, customer thank yous for um, like post purchase, welcome, so welcoming people to our newsletter. There's tons of kind of like automated email drip campaigns that you can plan within Clavio. And honestly, their free version covers a lot and you're gonna be able to use it for quite some time while you're growing the traffic of your audience um, for quite some time before you're gonna need to upgrade. You can even create sign up forms, so have these pop up on your like, website, you can have them slide up from the bottom. There's so many places that you can embed or like apply these sign up forms. And again, they make it super easy so you don't really need a developer to make it happen. They also have this new function which allows you to tap into SMS marketing. SMS marketing has become quite a popular thing. I'm not sure if I'm necessarily the biggest fan of SMS marketing, but I do really see the value of it and I think that it makes a lot of sense for brands to use that sort of marketing to connect with their audience. You can use text message marketing to reach people um, more personally, allow your brand to build a connection with your customer base, as well as kind of announce new products and just kind of keep them updated on the latest news of your business. Some people really do prefer this method over email marketing these days, and I get it. Your email inbox is probably already so filled up with tons and tons of junk, so this is a great new way to tap into um, a new marketing method that's going to help you reach your customers. All right, those are my five tools that I wanted to share with you guys this time. I hope this video was really, really helpful. If you've tried any of the tools that I mentioned in this video, please let us know in the comments below how you liked it, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, just so other people who are coming to this video can get an idea of what they are getting themselves into or what other 
other people's opinions about these tools are. If there is a specific tool that you want me to dive into more, please feel free to let me know. Or again, like I mentioned earlier, if there is a specific area of marketing that you want more suggestions for, I will try my best to give you guys more suggestions there. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, as well as the notification bell for my next videos. Other than that, I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!